What if before I could get my TV show, I had to first get permission from the competition? If Dan Rather or Diane Sawyer said no, I wouldn't be here. That makes sense. R.J. Bruner of Kentucky assumed he could start a moving company without having to get his competitor's permission. We'll schedule this one and this one first. So he started one. We put an ad on Craigslist, pickup truck and an enclosed cargo trailer, and we were very, very busy all summer long. Absolutely. More people wanted your services. Yeah. Now in just a couple of years, you got 30 employees, six trucks. Over 30 now. Clean cut young guys. That really sells, you know, in the moving industry. This customer's pleased. It's been great. The guys showed up exactly on time. They've been loading, they've been working hard. But RJ soon learned that pleasing customers isn't enough. He got a threatening letter from state regulators. In order to continue to operate, we need a household goods permit. Basically, it's a certificate of necessity saying that there is room in the market for us to operate. Certificate of necessity, meaning? A necessity within the moving market in Kentucky for another mover. What? A business has to prove it's needed to get a license? You essentially have to get permission from your own competition first. Tim Sandifer's law firm took Bruner's case for free. When Starbucks began, it would have had to have gotten permission from all the other coffee shops? That's right. But if you had had to prove then that America needed a new national chain of coffee shops, you couldn't have proven that. No, we don't need that. And yet it turns out America did need a new chain of coffee shops. We know that because they are so successful. Competition sorts this stuff out better. That's right. The consumer is in the driver's seat. But not when the competition has veto power. We're worried about consumer protections. Healthy companies in Kentucky. Ryan Floda is president of the Kentucky Movers Association. He has his own moving business. Kentucky, like half the states, allows existing companies to protest new competition. And over the past five years, 19 companies were prevented from entering the moving business because competitors said the existing transportation service is adequate competition would diminish their revenues. Affordable moving, Vincent Fisher, Hall moving, all these other moving companies say, no, we don't want to allow that. Well, what gives them the right? We're not against new companies coming into Kentucky. Yes, you are. You don't want a moving company stealing your business. We don't want the scenario of a licensed company going bankrupt. But companies go bankrupt all the time. It's the end of the line for Circuit City. Borders bookstore went belly up. It's part of the creative destruction that makes competition work. Let's say a town population of 20,000 people. Would it be beneficial to the consumers to have 15 moving companies in that area? Maybe. No. Well, How do you know? You'd have companies that are not um, in a position to provide a, a good service to the general public. The bureaucracy can't decide whether there's a public need for a new moving company. Not even the moving companies know that. They have to try it and find out by an experiment. And these laws prohibit that kind of experiment. Wouldn't Home Depot like to say, no, new hardware store in the neighborhood, you can't open. Wouldn't GM have liked to say that to Toyota and Honda? I'm sure. I'm not the one that set the law. I'm just abiding by the law. Also, he says, the older moving companies want to protect consumers from shady operators. Say I'm coming to pick up your furniture. Okay, I tell you it's $80 an hour. Well, then when I get to your new house, I say, well, you know, I'm gonna charge you $150 an hour. Now we have this thing called the internet where people can find out if a company has a bad reputation. Consumers go for the cheapest price, John. Risa DeBeer checked the web before she hired RJ. If somebody rated a company poorly, said they didn't take care of their items, that would certainly, you know, ring some alarm bells for me. Had you had complaints from people you'd moved? No, no complaints. In fact, we are the top ranked moving company in the state, according to Angie's List. Startups like RJ's company create much of the job growth in America. Entrepreneurs are the wealth creators of our society. They're the engine of innovation and progress and job creation and wealth creation. I assume if I want to start a business, a moving company would be a good way to enter. Simple, you just need a truck, some strength. Go compete. It should be. You buy a truck, you paint the word mover on the side of it, and you're in business. And if customers like your products and services, then they'll buy from you. And if they don't, then they won't. Now the regulators aren't just mean. 
for safety in an orderly marketplace? Shouldn't there be some rules? Orderly marketplaces are precisely what we don't want. What we want is a free marketplace. If we have an orderly marketplace, who's doing the ordering? It should be consumers who do the ordering. And the law stops them from doing that. Not to protect the public, but to protect established businesses against having to compete fairly. That violates liberty. These laws are outrageous and they all ought to go.